like an absolute nightmare um at least for like an early level cho'gath right who doesn't have you know low cooldowns on his range spells and doesn't have many much hp or man, uh hp or armor you know to keep him alive and he even goes for the doran's ring feel which... like a uh feel like a doran shield would be a lot better here but to, to survive the kitlin poke but i think again um when we think about these teams compositionally if if he builds like a turbo chem tank and like a randuins to kind of like mitigate some of this like damage or like a frozen heart or something like that it's going to be really really hard for, for blue side to play because chill gas will just eat so much damage especially because it's a passive will heal him up anytime something dies around him or he kills a minion or something like that it'll take so much damage and i'm just absorb it all and blue side ironically because they have 280 carries is actually very reliant on cooldowns they're very reliant on cooldowns and so if they if red side finds a way to burn the cd before the dragon fight starts or something like that and took out each other damage and heals back up then it's going to look pretty disastrous yeah i think we're looking at the var assault here to be the main contributor in these team fights once we start looking for you know dragons and whatnot later on yeah, um, definitely yeah and, and even though it's like a weird composition out of the blue side i mean i guess it still makes sense like you have two tanks two adcs and a mage player oh, as, as swain gets so dude he has one hp has to go for the has to go for the kill the ignite from galio the play comes in one more auto from kaisa the flash Ooh. from galio and the swain pulled back with the disdain and it's nothing else that comes with it though it's a trade of sums balin has burned every sum on the side on the red side here for ttb they have burned every cooldown available to them in terms of summoner spells. Yeah, so really unfortunate there for TTB. I mean, that was a winning trade. They were up level two to level one and they were, you know, getting tons of damage down. But in the end, they come out on the losing side of a winning trade by blowing all their sums. We see Swain still has his up. And uh, crucially there, Kaisa had her full procs on the Swain. Uh, but sorry, get it. Echo's going in for a little bit of a gank, trying to secure some mid lane farm for the Yone has a little bit of a CS gap forming, but Desired Gun is here. There's the flash with the hook. Connect! Thrash! Oh my goodness, as Lulu takes the first blood. Really, really good play from the Thrash there. First, to recognize what's going on, he sees Echo cutting off uh, Varus's way of escape, recognizes that Varus's only way out is through the jungle, so he gets there in time, and then, yes, he lands the beautiful hook. So. Just a great play by the Thresh there, and with no roam coming out of the Davenport bot lane, it means that they will just pick up a kill for free. As I'm talking about, again, with this top lane matchup, I mean, Jayath is doing well with himself with farm. Down, obviously, down a considerable amount, but you expect that at least. He is down uh, a considerable amount of farm, but again, they're not playing for lane. This Skarner, oh, side no. comp, as Skarner goes in for a little bit, auto attack for the stun, doesn't get it though. Dragath has to run away as um, we're looking to prep a dive. One second. Yeah, I but XL Macro is doing really well to keep himself in this game, though. I mean, obviously, like you said, he's got his CS almost doubled. As we see a mid lane trade here, Varus no flash. The Echo proc's going to land, but they won't have the Yone CC to lock him down for the kill. So Varus is going to stay alive from blowing the exhaust and a headshot onto the Cho'Gath. I was just singing his praises for not dying in this lane just yet, but just there, he must have had a trap or a, the net land on him because that headshot just absolutely decimated him. But Echo isn't stopping. He's ganking every lane and Galio is going to keep him alive for a bit, but the Kaisa stacks are on him. Ignite onto the Echo. He's one HP. Swain's going to flash into the kill. Both the TTB members are so low. Kaisa has her stacks full. Can she get this kill? Flay lands. They're all one HP. Oh, and Swain's gonna pick up the kill. That's a disaster for TTB. Kaisa's gonna fall, and Caitlyn's here to pick up the kill as well. But she will not get the assist. So good play from Desired Gun there to just recognize that he's dead no matter what, and he will run into the tower. Knock. Yeah. We just had a little bot lane two v two there. I don't know if you caught it. 
No, I did not catch it. However, I uh, can definitely see the aftermath to an extent. What I'm really uh, curious to see is why Lulu has not been top lane. I feel like Caitlyn has just been pushing into Cho'Gath for the last 15 minutes of the game. And so having Lulu not come up there to give, uh, <laughs> to give um, XL some love has been a little perplexing to me. But kind of going back to sixth stock of the game, they are down 1k gold right now. It's six minutes in. It's not a huge disaster as Thresh comes in with the roam. Trying to dodge the death sentence will do so wonderfully. The, the play comes in. Nothing more come of the play, though. He's just holding the wave so Thresh can't back on a safe timing. As Lulu just kills this kills Czar on a on a roam on a roam timing. Very well played. Uh, but yeah, as I was talking about before, the topside presence has not been there for TTB. And Caitlyn is one of those champs where if she falls behind, she is absolutely omega useless. And so I am curious to see as to why Lulu has not played around that win condition. Yeah, he, he was making a lot of mid and bot plays. And then when the timer was there for him to make a top play, Cho'Gath actually did get solo killed by the uh, Caitlyn. So... Um, yeah. He's, he has been making plays in the mid and bot lane, and he was unable to... Uh, Cho'Gath was unable to stay alive for the jungler to come around. So we have a pause, as it looks like the jungler has DC'd momentarily. Yeah, the uh, Davenport University jungler has DC'd momentarily. He will come back. I do oh, apologize go. for the interruption, as it's already over. And so Lulu will just hit, keep hitting the dragon. It is the ocean dragon, which does do more damage than uh, other dragons, so you may have to call down his mid laner to help him. Yeah, this is track. a level 4 echo. Trying to yeah. do that, though. So. Taking stock of the game as a whole, there's been a considerable lack of farming on the side of on the side of TTB. I mean, we have, obviously they have picked losing lanes, but I mean, even in the jungle, it's definitely a, a huge lack of, uh, of farm, which is primarily where the where this bullet is coming from. There are tied in kills, but I mean, the farm discrepancy is really starting to kick in here. Almost one point, almost uh, 700 gold, 800 gold for Caitlyn. We have 600 gold for Skarner. We have 200 gold in the mid lane for Varus. In the ball lane, we have 600 gold coming in through through the swing alone. And so I'm definitely curious to see about how much this gold will elevate. And obviously, as I start getting into lane, out of lane and getting into more team fights and more side lane pressure comes in for the Yone and for the Choga, I assume, as a little bit of a trade here, that's on the wrong side of the map, so get pulled in by the slave path, and the slave will come down. So that has to flash away to get out. Galio does use the hero's entrance as Swain hits an absolutely Ooh. monstrous E at the end there to, to pick up the kill as Skarner is here for the dive. She has flash, and she does have uh, friends of Flash Fantasy. The Galio pop is dodged. The, the Skarner pull absolutely pulled her out of tower range, and Skarner gets the kill it is a two for zero on the bot side yeah kaisa unable to find any lethal damage there onto davenport means that they just get a double kill for free in the bot lane um and with skarner already having his alt up oh uh, yone goes in for the lethal exchange there to the exhaust means yone can't do anything about this trade yeah he takes a really exhaust. nice chunk of health though so with the exhaust down we will see if he can get oh and oh, as there as a uh, he dies to a Varus solo kill. Yeah, it looks like Varus just uses alt there, gets the full stacks of his W and gets the kill. As Lulu comes in for the trade, I don't know if he wants this fight, buddy. Get out of there. As we see, see XL pull the wave and tried to hold the freeze, trying to secure himself some farm in this lane, but uh, it definitely did not work out in his favor. And it becomes, we have slowly gone from a 1k gold lead to almost a 3k gold lead here at just 10 minutes. As Lulu goes in for Varus, Varus has to flash over the wall. Yep, and so once again, we see Lulu blowing Varus's flashes. Will he be able to follow up this time as Davenport Acquiescence has just secured a solo kill and is now resetting for a big buy in the base? He picks up a Caulfield Warhammer and a Lucy Boot. And I, I thought it was interesting, although maybe a good idea was the Echo first purchasing the Magic Pen Boots. He secures the early move speed, which is so valuable on Echo. And um, I, I think he, with those early kills he got, I, I actually agree with it as a purchase. 
Yeah, what I'm not kind of seeing is uh, I wish that um, I kind of wish that Excel had not gone for the Bramble Vest. There's not a lot of healing coming through from the Kaelin as of now besides the Fleet Footwork. And so I do think that if he went for a Warden's Mail, which decreases auto attack damage, that would have been a lot more helpful in this lane. As we see the Poke Varus coming through, very normal, especially because he has the Ludens Echo. Uh, Poke Varus is going to be really, really nice. Um, so nothing too surprising there. Swain with the Leandres, also very, very basic. Nothing too surprising there. As Thresh is starting to foster, Lulu is on the mob side though. That they're going in for Echo. Echo has his ulti. He can just ult back and doesn't have enough time to press it. Varus gets a kill. Thresh has to put down the box to get away, but I don't think he's getting boxed up. Thresh is becoming an Amazon shipping package for the blue side. Tries to get away, <laughs> but it's not going to matter. The play comes through. Look he's trying moves. to run, but she, you Ooh. acquiescence gets the two for zero. Yeah, so they actually see Echo coming in for that play, and it was so well played by the Galio there. He sees Echo blast coning over the wall and preemptively charges his uh, his dash ability. I forget which key it is, if it's W or what, but he, he dashes so that mid-dash, Echo's flying over the wall from blast cone. He hits him and knocks him up. It you know guarantees that CC for him to be taken down, and it means that they just win that play very easily. And... Uh, yeah, Thresh was cut off as well, so two for zero. And Davenport University is looking very strong in this game. We have Skarner taking away the red buff as well. Yeah, I mean, this is just a cascading effect on the amount, on the lack of farming as Lulu's getting a little cut out here. He has a hint of corruption, he has to hold back. Lulu, hold back, please, thank you. Five is over the wall. Skarner with the flash follow. Garrett Galley with the hero's entrance, trying to get in the fight, but it's not gonna matter that much. Lulu is on 1 HP, but will get out safely. Yeah, I mean, just the level of damage that we're seeing come through from this Varus right now is unreal. We saw him execute that Thresh from about 30 or 40% HP. Um, I think it's the Piercing Arrow. That Q is just so lethal against low health targets, and when he toggles his W, it does that execute damage. So Yeah, as blowing we see. people up. The um, the gold lead has kind of stabilized in everywhere except the mid lane. It's becoming a mid lane and a bot lane crevasse as Rivari loses the first tower in bot sand right now as they're going to be a little bit further, but Swain is here. But uh, Thresh is here. Apologize for the cover for the Kai'Sa. Now, the Infernal Drake has spawned it, so they have guaranteed bot priority here for the dragon. Uh, Yoni is moving down though, so I'm curious to see if they do decide to fight for this as Caitlyn has the teleport, Varus is around the area, Galia is following, Galia has no ulti though, so his teamfight press is going to be a little bit smaller. Turret plates have fallen with only one so with only one turret being taken, which was the one on the bot side with both first tower, taken from both sides, as no one is necessarily posturing yet. Echo does lose his whole bot side jungle basically besides his wolves, yeah, uh, Davenport doing a really good job of exerting tons of pressure here. They know they don't have to take the dragon right away. They're so far ahead in um, in damage and gold and just pure stats right now that they can wa easily walk through the jungle, suffocate all the vision out, and just take the camps before going back to the dragon. Um, if anyone on TTB were to wander into the jungle there to see what was going on, they just die instantly. So. They avoid that mistake this time, but a good play from Davenport to look for something extra as opposed to just getting the dragon. Yeah, I mean, we see a 30 CS lead coming through from this corner. Um, we see in the top lane, the gold lead has stayed relatively the same. Uh, Kaelin has not necessarily grown in her CS numbers, which is definitely benefits to Cho'Gath later in the game goes on. Uh, the variance is absolutely massive, as oh. Lugu is taking a really Really weird path, and Caitlyn's taking a bad trade. Excel is going through. He's diving under the turret. This is still lethal. The flash comes through. The chomp goes oh. down. Excel, he's killing for breakfast. Yeah, and just as you said, right on time. He he's maintained his CS very very well in this lane. Personally, I thought it was going to go a whole lot worse than this, but he's only 25 CS down to a Caitlyn top. And honestly, you can't ask for anything much better than that. So yeah, he gets the Bramble Vest and the plated steel caps and he can just run down the Caitlyn whenever he pleases. Yeah, most definitely. What I wanna see coming through is the fact that they just need to stabilize the farming. 
They need to defend Echo's camps. I mean, Galio is taking Echo's Raptors right now as they are just bleeding camps left, right, and center of this Echo. And so he's become very, very stunted overall. But what we need to see right now is basically a sense of stabilization. We need to see Reds are just calm down a little bit, not take so many risky engages. As look at the damage to Cho'Gath from the Varus. It's literally zero. As, as Lulu goes in for a trade, the Varus with a piercing arrow. Almost one shot to Lulu, but it's not going to matter in the end. Give it to Cho'Gath, baby. Let it launch and cross down. It's a shutdown for Cho'Gath. Oh, Cho'Gath is just getting injected with so much gold right there. Really good gank um, from Lulu to recognize that Varus is completely caught out. He has no wards and he's pushed up so far in the lane so good for them to you know punish that mistake and get an extra 700 gold onto this Cho'Gath who now with two shutdowns in a row is going to be a beefy beefy boy. As we see Cho'Gath getting kind of collapsed on by three sides here the Galio is does not want to commit the justice punch yet Caitlyn is not going to be able to get in range Galio has to engage with the justice punch if he wants to make anything happen in this play but it doesn't have to go for it he's had to just take Skarner's uh, Echo's top side instead as we see Jade on the mid lane, Kaiser plays so 1 HP, Kaiser gets the big shutdown, a solo kill, as Thresh comes a little bit more, Lulu's trying to come into the play, Thresh is the play, that's the boss, but here the end comes down, trying to peel away from the Skarner, and it's just, everyone's just gonna walk away, it is a 2 for 0 overall. Yeah, TTB picking up tons of shutdown uh, here with the last 3 kills, and it still puts them at a 5k gold deficit here at 17 minutes, which is not the best, but... With the with the shutdowns in their pocket, we'll see if they can uh, actually Scarner's have to engage onto the onto the Yone. Yone's at one HP. He's being taunted, stunned up, and he oh. can't press a single button. Galio gets the kill as Lulu walks in a straight line against the Varus man. Oh my goodness! As the death engines goes a little wide from from desire to gun there, uh, nothing else will come with the play. But they get two for zero plus probably the mid lane tower. As Kaelin is just pushing on the top side, Excel is still in base, waiting to see if he can TP to the top, to the, to the mid lane play to get something ahead. He gets him going here for the red side, but I think he's going to lose the tower. Yeah, and that, those various Qs are just doing As so the Galio much. flash jump, the, the flash does his punch in. Oh, oh my goodness, the various damage from a 30 years away. It absolutely seals his fate, and Rivari gets taken down. Man. That those various cues are just hitting like an absolute truck right now. We'll have to see what mythic he's gonna go for. He decided to get the Muramana first buy, um, but he is resetting now, so probably just the Dusk Blade. We will see that. Um, but yeah, do you have complete control? Um, they can walk into the jungle whenever they want as a team and get vision, which means that. Um, TTB will have no chance at contesting this Rift Herald. Yeah, as we see before, as we see Cho'Gath finishing his Frostfire Gauntlet, I don't like it at all. I think that you need the way to actually get on this backside and actually stick to them. So getting a Turbo Chem Tank would have been a lot better, I think, for this game. Um, thinking more and more about the game as a whole here, the Yone has caught up in farm. Not a small endeavor against a fed varus poke a fed poke varus he has caught up in farm as galli gets hit with a death sentence to the kind of going on him the, the echo stun comes down the parallel convergence is there and galli gets shut down by the kaisa yone is still on the flank here for the dragon but gets spotted off by the squire's bloom as chuck out the chair they just cemented the position on the play varus on the back line poking hits kaisa for a quarter hp without even trying Okay, it's a 5v4 here. Can TTB pull it out? The Varus is going to the play. Varus is a flash away. Lulu's on the Varus, but Yone is alone by himself. Lulu gets taken down by the Varus. The one shots are coming through, but Excel is soaking so much damage on the play. Excel is just trying to run for his life as a flash. Stun coming from the game with Garner. It's a 2 for 1 on the play. It's a 3 for 1. Varus is an extra on the Kaisa. Smash has to run away. It's a 4 for 1 on the play. Sounds with the double kill as Smash has to run away gets hit with the starter but it's not gonna matter it's a five for one with a triple for swing oh man and it's the split damage on the virus virus right there at the beginning of the fight that means that they don't win it we saw the yon all being dedicated to the to the two or three man knock up there on the tri bush but um varus lives with a few hundred hp and Yone decides to not use his ult on the Varus, so not sure exactly what happened there, but um, Varus got hit by a death sentence and lived, and now with members dead, they're going to Rift Herald the mid lane tower. 
Yeah, I mean, it's... That's going to be a really big disaster here as Blue gets engaged on, has to ult away, uses that cooldown. Gallo with a Dustin Sponge inside, but he's absolutely griefing it. Kaiser gets the soap, but Gas gets the kill. Yep, good, good death sentence there to uh, not let Galio jump away. They pick up a kill on the reverse, but it's just on the support. Um, we still have such a massive shutdown on this Varus. We really would have liked to pick it up in that last fight. But um, now with people in base and not near the mid tower, TCB is looking to get a little ARAM play going here. Yeah, as we have seen to get, oh, as Togat gets engaged up, but this is not the fight you want to see. Togat is going to soak all this damage up and he's not going to go down. But as I was just alluding to, the gold is 9k, they are 9k down, but compositionally speaking, they are still holding on. They are still buying time. If this game goes later on, Varus will get stronger, but at a certain point, he will tend to fall off. Lethality champions are not that are not great scalers. That's the problem with Lethality. You have to get ahead, you have to win, and you have to keep winning. That's the issue. Cho'Gath is gonna get bigger. Eventually, on the on the on the on the on the blue side, they're just not gonna be able to do any damage to this guy. I mean, uh they're definitely just not able to do enough damage to this guy, and so we will definitely see about, we'll definitely see how it goes. Yeah, uh, red side definitely outscaling here. If they can, if they can, yeah, if they can hold on for another 10 or 15 minutes here, um, the Yone and Kaisa should be able to power spike with that massive Cho'Gath front line, and we will see if they can hold on in this game. Um, Davenport with two dragons means that they're only about seven minutes or away uh, from the dragon soul here. So that could be a possible win condition for them. That'll open up a lot of opportunities for them to win this game. But for now, TTB wants it to go long. As Kitlin burns the flash there from the defense away, but Kitlin's trying to take some damage to the threat, but nothing will come of it. Skarner is coming around from the backside. Rivalry and Zeth is kind of caught out here. XL has committed the TP into the play. They're going for this play. Zeth gets one shot instantly by the Kitlin, and they have to play away and run. XL's trying to save the Kaisa, but it's not going to matter. Skarner with the, oh. the pull onto the Kaisa, and she's taking down at the 2 for 0 on the play. XL has to run. The choke after the poke is coming down. The chain of corruption hitting the Echo, and it's a 4 for 0. And blue side is end the game. Yeah, this looks like a GG here. Maybe they can end end the game. They might have to settle for inhib into Baron. Um, but yeah, they were able to pick up the Thresh kill without even having to use the Skarner ult, which means that Skarner is very fast and he can just run up. Cho'Gath tries to flash away. Kaisa unable to do the same, and they just ult the Kaisa. And uh, yeah, Nexus turret's going down here. Threshing Yone alive, Kaisa just spawned. We have the Nexus alive. Can they end? Here comes I Echo. Think, I think they can here, Fish. I think that this is gonna be the end of the game as Caitlyn gets one as Caitlyn one shots the Yone as Skarner does go down though. It's one one of the play. Echo does have the local bridges, but it doesn't matter. GG as Davenport University take down TTB one to zero. Yeah, TTB there getting punished by the ADC solo laners. I mean, Cho'Gath did well to hold on into the game, but we never got to see the real Yone power spike. We never got to see the real uh, Kai'Sa power spike. And with these aggressive, you know, laning focused champions that Davenport have picked up for themselves, it gets them a win in game one. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching in. Coming, coming soon, it's game two. Davenport University versus TTB, so don't go anywhere.